everyone. Welcome back. I'm uh, Messia Shamsat of Yoga Magnificat, and I'm here to present to you a little chair yoga. Um, and I'm excited about this because I've had a lot of people ask me, well, what's chair yoga about? Is it just sitting on a chair and like relaxing like you're watching TV? And the answer is no. It's actually quite a well-rounded workout. Um, I like to describe it as um, gentle beginner's yoga that's done standing and seated on a chair like this. And we use the chair like a prop. So um, somewhere halfway through class, I'm going to cue you to stand up, move your chair to the end of your mat, and we'll be doing some standing poses. So for this practice, you will need a mat, um, or at least uh, a place on the floor that you feel sturdy. Make sure your feet are bare so that you don't have any slippage with socks, especially if you're practicing without a mat. The next thing that I would probably advise having is a yoga strap or an old belt or tie that you can use for various postures, such as reaching your foot out in front, crossing your leg over in pigeon pose. So just an example of some of the poses um, that you might need a strap for. So you can go ahead, pause the video and grab some of those items in case you feel you need them. This is a practice for everyone and anyone. There's no getting up and down on the floor. So you don't need your, your wrists and you also don't put pressure on your knees as well. So with that, we're going to get started. This is a fairly um, quick practice. Um, usually these classes are about an hour long and um, today I'm just going to give you a little bit of a taste. So um, you new people up there and regular chair yoga people can get in a practice. So we start normally sitting on a chair and I would choose one that is sturdy, not rolly. Um, a, folded, a foldable chair is fine. A dining chair is great as long as it's um, fairly flat on the bottom and not too upholstered. And that you can sit with your feet flat on the floor and not um, with feet dangling. Uh, if that's the case, you can find a telephone book and put it underneath your feet in case you need something to support um, your feet underneath. So once you're comfortable and all set up, we'll start here in our seated mountain pose. So what I'm going to invite you to do is actually scoot away from the back of your seat. So rather than in reclining and hanging out, you're going to sit slightly away, so scooch forward, and sit up nice and tall. And from here, we're going to take our centering, the beginning of class, while we do a little bit of breathing and um, focus. So place the hands with palms up on the thighs. We'll roll the shoulders up and back, and then begin to elongate by pushing the sit bones down and feeling that length traveling up the spine and towards the crown of your head. Take a moment here to breathe in and breathe out slowly. Feel free to keep those eyes closed or just softly gazing at the floor. Find your breath and let the movement of the air flow through your lungs. A slow, deep inhale, followed by a slow, deep exhale. And just continue breathing in slowly breathing out. Continuing with this breath, trying to keep your focus on the breath and the sensations that you feel or notice as you breathe in and out. Notice if you have any thoughts that are drawing you away from this time and this moment and draw your attention back to the simple inhale and exhale. Maybe find something right now in this moment that brings you an inner smile, whether it is the sunlight streaming through your windows, whether it is the weather getting milder out, 
quiet in your home, or just simply the beating of your heart. Maybe allow that smile to permeate from your inner being through your heart, radiating into all corners and crevices of your body. Maybe even traveling up to the corners of your lips into a real smile. Remember, while you're doing this at home, most likely no one is watching you smiling to yourself. And you might even notice a lovely change, a shift in attitude or emotion while you allow yourself to smile and remember these things you are thankful for. We'll keep that thought with us during our practice today as we invite a little movement. We open the eyes, bring the arms up with an inhale, lifting to the sky. Exhale, press the air away. We'll do this a couple more times. Inhale to lift. Exhale, flow the arms away. Last time, inhale to lift. This time, join the palms, look up at your thumbs, and draw a line down the center of your body, fold over your thighs, press your belly to your knees let your head come down if your hands can touch the floor go ahead and place your fingertips there and let your head come down relax your shoulders round your spine and drop your head now if you have any blood pressure issues or you find that you get dizzy when your head is below your heart keep your head up above your heart it's okay to hang out like this otherwise relax Breathe in through your back and exhale, slowly melt down. On our next inhale, walk your hands onto your shins. Press the crown of your head forward and draw your shoulders back. This is called the halfway lift. Exhale, forward bend over the thighs. When you're ready to inhale, come back to halfway lift, hands on the shins, pulling the crown of your head long. Last time, exhale, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift, hands on the shins. Pull your spine nice and long, tuck your belly up towards your spine, and then press down into your feet to scoop yourself up. Hands to the sky, palms to the heart. Good, from here, we'll separate the feet a little bit wider than hips distance. We're just going to come into a more supported base and bring the right hand down. Maybe grip the bottom of your chair, take your left hand off to the side, and then take it up and over to the right. Look up towards the sky as you reach up through those fingertips. Breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, come all the way up. Place the left hand down. Take the right hand up and over looking up towards your bicep, keeping your right hip bones back down onto the chair. Take another inhale, exhale, come back down. From here, begin to roll your shoulders, breathing in and breathing out. So you probably notice that some of these postures look a lot like the ones we do seated on the ground, except we're elevated on a chair, which gives our hips a little bit more freedom so that we're not sitting cross-legged and crunched up on the floor. So it's a really nice option, especially if you work in an office or if you're seated a lot during your day. So we're going to take the hands down onto the thighs. Your fingertips are pointing inwards, elbows out. We're going to come forward, kind of like a seated cat-cow. Bring your chest forward first, and then drop your head last, and then roll back up as you push into your hands. Inhale, roll your shoulders back, look up. Exhale, chest comes forward, dipping down. Head comes down last. Round yourself up, head comes up last. Come forward, inhale. Exhale, draw it all the way back. Inhale, come forward, 
Just drawing a little bit more suppleness into your low back, spinal muscles. Come all the way to the top and we'll stay here. From here, we're going to come into a diagonal twist for the side body and a little bit of the spine. So let's take the right elbow down onto that thigh. Press down into your bottom hand or arm and then lower your hand, left hand down and scoop it up and slightly back. You're going to open your chest. Think about your chest pointing towards the left knee and the left arm up and slightly back. Take a deep breath in while pushing down on your bottom arms. You feel that expansion across your entire chest. Take that left hand now as you exhale, scoop it underneath your right arm. Take a look over to the right. Inhale, open it up, scoop it. Open, wide arms. Exhale, scoop that left arm through. Inhale last time, scoop it all the way back. And then slowly place your left hand down onto your left thigh. You're gonna walk your way back up nice and slow and do the same thing on the other side. So the left elbow comes down onto that thigh. Take the right arm down to the floor and you're going to sweep it up and back for an inhale. Get nice and big, almost like you're trying to give this guy a great big hug. Breathing in, breathing out. Let's take that right hand. We're gonna scoop it underneath the left arm, kind of looking towards the left. Inhale, unwind, open up, get really expansive and push down gently into your left elbow. Exhale, curl it in. Inhale, move it up and back. Exhale, curl it in. Inhale, move it up and back. Last time here, place the right hand down onto your thigh. Walk yourself up. We're going to move on to some more warm ups for the upper body and then move down to the core and the lower limbs. So, the first thing we're going to do is bring our feet back to about center, bring the hands out to the sides, and put your hands onto your shoulders. Now for this, some people suffer from a little bit of frozen shoulder. Um, maybe you have some issues with your range of motion. So we're gonna take some shoulder circles by keeping your fingertips light on your shoulder heads and drawing circles with your elbows. So go ahead and just create small, medium, or big size circles just to feel out the range of motion you have in that shoulder. And then from here, go the other direction. So move the elbows back. Again, small or large circles. And keep breathing, even if we're moving, even if you're not sure if you should be breathing in or out and you feel like you're doing it wrong, don't worry. Just keep breathing, don't hold your breath, and just put a smile on your face and enjoy the movement. Now from here, we're going to keep the elbows um, about shoulder height. If you get tired, feel free to take a break or lower your elbows a little bit past the shoulders. So we're going to start here with the elbows about parallel to the ground. And we're going to reach and open. Exhale, bring the hands to the shoulders. Inhale to open. Exhale, bring the hands in. Inhale to open. Exhale, bring them in. Over time, you're going to start feeling the weight of your arms maybe in your shoulders, a little bit in your neck. So try to keep from hunching your shoulders as you move. Good. Just building up a little bit more strength and heat in those shoulders. Good. And then from here, we'll take the arms out to a T with the palms facing up. Now we're gonna start challenging those rotator cuffs a little bit. So all we're going to do is a small movement where we turn the palms forward and back. So have your palms face the back of the wall or the wall behind you, and then rotate your hands forward and up and back as much as you can. We're going to continue this movement very slow. You can test out your range of movement, especially if you know you have any shoulder issues, any pre-existing problems you have. You know, maybe by now you're feeling your arms are a little bit getting a little bit heavier, a little bit tired. Feel free to take a break at any time, but if you can keep going, please try to challenge yourself. We're not here for very long for this video clip. We're just gonna to try to get some movement and warmth in. 
All right, so to build things up a little more, we're not done yet. So we're gonna take the hands forward and we're going to imagine that we're going to make little tiny circles, but keep your palms facing forward. Okay, so you're not moving uh, around your shoulders by keeping your arms rotating. You're keeping the palms forward and you're just drawing little itty bitty circles. By now you might be feeling like things are burning. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out, and if you can keep going, you're gonna switch directions. Small, tiny circles. Try not to wave your arms around. We're not using momentum. We're using the tiny muscles in your rotator cuffs. We're keeping them active. We're not letting them go just yet. Okay, we're gonna pause. We're gonna hug your arms together, right arm over left. Grab your shoulder heads, drop your elbows and shoulders. Take a deep breath in, sit up tall. Exhale, get soft. You might feel the area around your shoulder heads and the upper back between your shoulder blades open up a little. Inhale, open the arms again. Let's take the left arm over the right, give yourself another hug. Be sure to drop those elbows, relax the shoulders, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Inhale, unfurl and just roll those shoulders, shake it out. All right, for the next series, I'm gonna show you a few core exercises that you can do on the chair. Um, for this one, it's a little bit smaller of a chair than the ones we use at my studio. So I'm going to show you the best I can with this chair. Make sure your chair is sturdy and sturdily placed on the floor. We're going to sit nice and tall, place the feet together and make sure that you're, um, it's well supported underneath your thighs, but you're not so close to the back of the chair that you're just going to sit back on it. We want to keep the back independent of the chair back as much as we can so we can rely on the core to stabilize and to activate. So let's bring the feet close in and come up on your tiptoes. You can put your fingertips around your belly and then feel your belly button pull back towards your spine. So you're really bracing your core. If you're not really sure, almost imagine someone coming to give you a little punch in the belly and you're going to protect yourself by squeezing your abdominal muscles. At the same time, push your toes down into the floor and you'll feel the low abs activate as well. Now we'll take the hands out in front, turn the palms up, and then from here, slide back, push down into your toes and stay here. This is called very boat pose on the chair. Now you could try bringing your feet out in front. You're gonna work your quads and your hip flexors a little bit and also your core. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhale, maybe lift the arms up to the sky. Exhale, lower them down. Inhale to lift and exhale, bring them down. Keeping your back slanting back nice and strong towards the chair, but not resting. Last one, inhale to lift and exhale, set her down. All right, from here we're going to get to some standing positions. So we're going to get off the chair and take a walk behind the mat. I'm going to shift my chair so that it is at the top of my mat with at least two of the back legs on the mat, just to make sure that um, it's nice and stable and the mat doesn't slip away from you. Now my chair is a little bit shorter than I'm used to. If you have a dining chair, they're usually pretty tall. Um, you can select a chair that will give you more levels of support. So you just think of your chair like a prop, okay? So standing behind the chair, keep your fingertips on the back of the chair if you feel like you need some help with your balance. You can always choose to take your hands off at any point or just hover and play with your balance or have it there just in case. So stand behind your chair about hip distance apart. Okay, so your feet are kind of lined up with your hips and you have a nice purchase of the ground beneath you with the soles of your feet. From here, we're going to take a little sit back. So um, bend your knees, sit your hips back and come into chair pose. So chair pose is like creating a little bit of a shelf with your legs as you drift the hips back, draw your core in and then lift the arms to frame your face. Now, if you're not really sure about this, you can keep your hands on the chair. 
Whichever way you choose is all perfectly fine. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. We start working those quads. You can take a little pulse for five, four, three, two, one. Stay low and then place the hands back on the chair to test your balance. We're going to take some alternating lunges here. Take the left foot and step it back. Stay forward. You notice my upper body is leaning forward in the same line as my back foot. Now I'm going to keep this front knee bent. I'm going to draw my left foot back to the starting position and left side again. Same foot. Left foot forward and left foot back. Keep your core engaged throughout the entire motion. Feel free to keep your right knee bent as you come back to a chair-like position at the top. Do a couple more. And bring your left foot in. Stand up nice and tall. Woo, you can feel it on your right side, right glute. Perfectly normal. Feet about hip distance apart. Bend your knees, come back to a chair pose. Begin with your right foot this time. Right foot steps back. Stay lunging forward. Right leg comes in, keep the left knee bent. Okay, so notice how this leg doesn't move at all as I move my right foot forward and back in space. Okay, so it's really working this left quad, left glute, hip muscles, all those things that help us to become strong and stable in the legs. So a couple more like this. You're probably feeling your heart rate starting to raise and starting to feel a little bit more warm. Let's do one more, step it back, come back to the top and stand up nice and tall. Good, now that we're standing here, we're going to take what we call the standing downward facing dog. So you've probably seen people on their hands really pushing their body weight up into a inverted V. We're not going to do that, but we're going to do it in the on the chair. So you're going to walk back, keep your hands on the chair and get nice and long. So you're gonna see if you can get your head between your biceps and then bend your knees and sink down. Take a deep breath, push into your palms or your hands and weigh your upper front body towards the floor. If you want, you can play with straightening your legs, bending them a little, straightening your legs and bending them. Try to look down at the floor or at your toes. You're relaxing your head. See if you're holding on to any tension in your body. This is a really nice, easy back stretch, especially in the morning if you're feeling tight and it's hard to even reach down and put your socks on. I think that happens to everybody, unless you're like a five-year-old. <laughs> so you're gonna push your feet down, stay stationary. Begin to bend your knees. Take your time to walk yourself up. Your head can come up last as you come to mountain pose at the top. Let's take the hands behind. If you can grasp your hands, you're going to press them down to the floor and bring your shoulder heads back in space. So as you do so, you're opening up your collarbones and creating a nice open space around the chest. You're going to look forward, breathe in, exhale, press the fist down a little more, breathing in, and then slowly release, bring the hands down. We're going to try some uh, warrior poses here with the hands on the chair. If you've done uh, classes without the chair and are fairly confident with your balance, by all means, you can omit the chair. But this is for anyone who wants to know how we use chairs in this class. So starting at mountain pose, take the left foot and step it back. Come into a lunge. So first we're going to find a lunge. Take your left hand up if you like. Keep one hand down. Maybe take your other hand up. Or you can just kind of hover. If you're not really sure, hover your hands to the top of your chair for stability. A lot of people find this a difficult pose because I'm asking you to come onto your left toe mound while lifting up your back heel. A lot of people come into lunge and they think, I'm gonna put my heel down and that's all I need to do. That's not quite what it is. You have to press your heel towards the earth and keep it off the ground. 
So you're gonna draw your core in, whichever arm position you've chosen, out in front or up above, or one on, one off. You're gonna stare forward, be nice and strong, and squeeze your inner thighs towards each other as though they're trying to hold a block between the legs. So lunge position, nice and strong. Next option is to take a forward lunge. The hands can come down. So first option is to come back to this diagonal lunge where you're leaning forward in the same line as your back heel. And you're going to take little tricep push-ups, bring the elbows towards your body, push your body forward, and then come back up. But notice that my front knee is not moving forward. It is hinging at the hip, so I'm coming forward and then I'm pressing back up, hinge forward, press back up. Try not to move your knee too much. Good, one more, come back up. Now, turn your back toe to the side and land your heel. Keep the bend in your right knee, this doesn't change, and you're coming to warrior pose. Make sure your back toes are turned in a little bit towards, kind of towards your chair, but not out to the back of the mat. So you see the orientation of my foot is turning in, 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 but off to slightly the side. So then I'm going to open my arms to the front and back. I can always hold on to the chair or I can float my arms up. Good, so this is our warrior pose. Make sure you're really pushing to the side edge of your left foot and your right knee is tracking towards your pinky toe. So don't let it kind of wobble into your big toe. You're gonna to push it back slightly in space same thing with the other legs. You're really opening up through those inner hips. Yeah, so now we found our warrior pose. You could turn your head to face the right hand. Take a big breath in, big breath out. We're gonna to come to side angle pose. So we're gonna take the right hand onto the chair, flip the back hand, and we're gonna bring it up and over. So our side angle looks a lot like the ones we do in our regular classes, except we've got the option to hold on to that chair. Some people who practice for a while can put their elbow on their thigh, but if this is too far down for you, stay up higher. That's what the chair is for. It's just like a block or a strap. It's a great prop. I might even include this in a regular beginner's class just to show people all the different height levels that are available to them. Come back up into warrior. We'll straighten that front leg, reach forward, Coming into triangle, so notice how both of my legs are really straight. I'm going to set my arm down. I'm going to slide the left hand up and over and take a slight lean back. So notice that I'm pretty high up here because my hand is on the chair. You might see people in regular classes take the hand down here and get nice and low, but not a lot of people have this range around their hips and in their inner thighs. So the chair brings it up to a more accessible level. Make sure that you're rotating your chest and your belly open to the left. Really push into the edge of your left foot. So nice and strong down through this side, really straight through this leg, just like a triangle. To get out safely, you're gonna bend your right knee, push down and come back up. We're going to switch sides. So you can hold onto your chair for this transition while you heel toe your back foot in. And once you get close enough, turn to face your chair. Stand nice and tall and be brave. We're doing the other side. So we'll start with lunge on the right side. Step your right foot back. Get nice and tall. Again, either float your hands above, test your balance because notice that back foot is off the mat. And if you'd like, you can bring a hand up while keeping one hand on the chair or you can bring both hands up. Again, squeeze your inner thighs and imagine holding a block between your legs. Core is drawn in, you're nice and tight. Think about staring at a spot in the distance for your focus. All right, the hands are going to come down. We're going to lean forward, push back against your right toes into this nice diagonal line. You're gonna bend your elbows towards your ribs, come to a tricep push up, and then come back up. Tricep push up, come back up. Try to keep your left knee from sliding forward. This is as stationary as it gets. Push it up, hinge only from your hips. Hinging and coming up. Good. Last one, come all the way up. This time, you're going to turn your back toes 
off to the side, come to your warrior pose. Now I'm going to be facing behind my, I'm going to face away from you, so you have to bear with me. Take your left hand forward and your right hand back. So same thing, and then stare off to the left hand. Bend your left knee, right leg is really straight. Good. We're going to make our way to our side angle pose. So reach forward and place your arm down onto your chair. Take your right hand, flip the hand up and bring it up and over the head. And then think about rotating your shoulder back slightly. Left knee bent, right leg really straight and really pushing open that right hip. Take a deep breath and a deep breath out. We're just holding it here for a number of breaths. Inhale, come back up to your warrior pose. You're going to straighten your front leg. Come to triangle. This time, reach forward just like you did before. And then set your arm down and take your right hand up and over that shoulder and lean back a little bit. So now you notice um, the idea of me leaning back onto an invisible wall. Both my legs are super straight. I'm up a little higher here because I have my left arm on the top of a chair. If you want to be a little higher, you come up higher on your hand and you do what you can. Don't force yourself into a pose you're not ready for or a depth. And then bend your front knee and come back to your warrior pose. Find that focus. Lower the hands. Use your chair to help you. Heel toe your foot in and then begin to step it up. From here, while you have your hands on your chair, we're gonna take a side bend. So take your left hand to the side and bring yourself up and over, plugging your feet down into the floor. Couple of breaths here. Inhale, assist yourself up using your hand on the chair, drop the left hand. Left hand comes onto the chair, right hand off to the side, brings it up and over for another side bend. Inhale, come all the way up, and we're going to get seated back on the chair. So you can keep your chair at the top or you can move your chair, it's up to you. I'm just moving it because it's where my camera is faced. And we're gonna grab our strap and have a seat. Okay, once you have your strap, you're gonna open it up. Find the middle and your right foot. You're going to loop it underneath your right toe mound, Try not to do it in the middle arch of your foot. There's lots of nerves there, so I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit underneath the toe pads, you see? So we're gonna start with the right foot forward. Okay, so I'm just pushing my foot out. From this angle, it looks like my foot is huge because it's closer to the camera. <laughs> you get to look at my wonderful feet. Take a deep breath in. Flare the toes towards your face. And we're gonna take pigeon pose. So you're gonna bend that knee and you're gonna to try to bring that ankle over your left thigh or knee. So for me, you'll notice that my shin is, a, is fairly parallel to the ground. For you, you might notice that your knee's up here or you have trouble just holding onto it. That's what the strap is for. This might just be enough for you. So if you can't really bend forward, I want you to stay right here. If you have a little bit more room to open that knee, you can try folding forward, so bend at the hips, the waist. Feel free to get down a little bit lower. And you can decide where you stop in this pose, okay? Some people um, may not be able to bend forward very much. Some people are fairly bendy and can even wrap themselves right into the stretch. Don't feel pressured that that's not you. I'm just showing you all the different little layers that you can put into your practice as you progress. So think of it more as something to maybe look forward to rather than something that you can't do right now, okay? So whatever feels good, you choose and decide how far you wanna go. So this is our pigeon pose, really great for an external hip rotation, um, some stretching around the glutes, also around the low back right side. Feel free to linger into this as long as you like. It's one of, maybe arguably, one of the best yoga poses out there and you can do it many different ways. And this is one of the most accessible ways you can do it. And we'll come all the way back up. 
release that right leg. And we're going to tether the left foot. This time, pressing that left foot forward, squeezing the toes towards the face, kicking through the heel. So you're stretching a little bit behind your calf. And then bend your knee, cross your ankle. Let that knee relax. Again, don't worry if your knee is really high up or you're just kind of barely hanging on there. That's what the strap is for. Now, if you feel like you can hinge forward, go ahead, just carefully coming down. Those of you with more room can even take that left arm to the inner thigh and just give it a little press downward until it feels good. Take a deep breath in to the side, little by little, if you want to come further. Use your breath. Breathe into your left side, left hip. And then slowly come up. We'll end with our last stretch here for both sides of the back and the hamstrings, which looks a lot like our seated forward fold if we were doing this on the floor. This can be done with or without a strap. I'll show you with the strap first. All I do is I keep my feet about hip distance apart. So notice they're not together. They're about hip distance apart and I'm tethering them kind of like I would a sleigh dog race. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> a sled with sled dogs. Okay, obviously I don't know what that is. But you're going to hold on to your reins and you're going to shorten that strap and come forward again, hinging from the hips. Notice I'm not rounding into it. I'm hinging like the top of a box with hinges to lower down, right? And then once I feel like I've gotten down as far as I'm going to get, I'm going to slowly round the spine, drop the head and shoulders, and allow myself to come forward. All the while keeping my heels on the ground and my toes up. Don't let them splay off to the side. Don't let them bend inwards. Try to keep them fairly straight pointing up. Now, if you're not using a strap, you can hold on to your legs. As you're coming down, you can just walk your hands down your legs safely and uh, gradually, and then holding on to your shins or your ankles, you're just going to pull yourself down. If you are further down and uh, it works for you, sorry, I have too much hair today. <laughs> you can cross your elbows. Um, and just rest them leaning into your shin. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out, and just let that breath travel up the length of your spine, down your glutes, around to your hamstrings. It's a really nice back body stretch. Let your chin drop too, and you'll really feel this nice stretch at the base of your neck. and then slowly lift your head to take your time to walk your way up, even pausing halfway just to let any blood drain out of the head. If you feel dizzy at any point, feel free just to linger longer, linger longer, <laughs> and come all the way back up. Now we're ready for our Shavasana. So feel free to lean back against your chair finally. And come into a semi-reclined position. You might even want to extend your legs, slide your back onto your chair. Let your toes splay out so your hips and your knees are nice and relaxed. I always say this is the way that maybe your parents told you not to sit in polite company, but hey, you're home. <laughs> we're quarantined. Do whatever you want, right? And plus, we're adults. So roll your shoulders back. Let your hands rest with the palms up, perhaps. And just allow yourself to close the eyes. Breathe in deep. Exhale slowly and fully. And notice how good it feels to have moved your body. Notice areas of your body that are thanking you right now for having come to your practice, even if it was through an online video. Come back to that 
thought of gratitude, that thought that made you smile at the beginning of class. And you let that be your focus for now as you just breathe. Let go. And soften. Slowly begin to wiggle your hands and feet. Feel free to stay longer if you'd like. Or you can just join me in reaching up overhead and stretching the body long for a deep inhale. And exhale. Release the hands. And we can finish together. Bring the hands in front of the heart. May you have this warmth and sense of gratitude with you today in your thoughts, words, and heart. Namaste. Thank you all so much for joining me. Please let me know what you think with some comments down below. I appreciate it and I'll uh, have some more videos coming soon. So stay tuned and I'll see you later. Bye.